artificial intelligence is going to change our world. This amazing te technology is going to change the way we live and we work. In just a few years, AI will help us diagnose diseases, manage our money, and inspect every product on the production floor. And with generative AI, so many areas of our productivity will be enhanced and uh, blah, 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 blah. How many talks have you heard like this before? Dozens? A thousand? I have worked in artificial intelligence for 30 years, and I have given myself hundreds of talks to audiences like this to convince them that AI is the most important technology in the history of humankind. Today, this is in front of everybody's eyes. Even my 85 years old uncle from Calabria sends me regular text messages on a weekly basis telling me the latest advancement in artificial intelligence, as if it was now his turn to convince me. I'm not here today to talk about technology. I am here today to talk about how artificial intelligence is going to help us understand the thing that we care the most about, ourselves. Is AI here to replace us? Are we replaceable? What are we if we can be replaced by a simple piece of code running on a computer? These are very complicated questions. And to answer this question, I will take you on a little time travel to meet 17 years old Max Versace. We are in the early 90s. And as many teenagers of the age, I was curious, and I was asking myself big questions. Who am I? What am I doing here? What is my purpose? But I was 17, and hormones were raging. So after months of tortures, I was able to convince my poor parents to buy me a powerful motorcycle, which I promptly crashed just two weeks later. The experience that followed was enlightening. You know, strangely, I did not break any bones, but doctor told me, you are going to stay in bed for a month. And restless as I was, I had to do something with my time. So my parents told me, you're selling the motorcycle. And so I thought, I can take the money and invest it in the stock market. Genius. So luckily, in the next four weeks, I studied the stock market and I was able to double my money. The money that I gained, though, was not the biggest gift. With all the time at my disposal to think, and to think about the way I was thinking, and to think about the way I was able to crack the stock market and make money, a question started to bug me. What if my brain is just a very powerful machine that takes data as input to learn to perform a smart behavior? That question was very interesting, was so interesting to determine my future career choices. At that age, I was interested in all sorts of sciences, but then I thought the brain is really at the basis of all the sciences, because that's what we use to think about science. So I decided to dive into the study of the brain, because perhaps it will help me understand and get the answers I was looking for as a teenager. And that is precisely what I did. Over the next 30 years, I studied the brain in depth. With many, many colleagues and friends, I worked to design equations and computer code that captures the complex dynamics of networks of neurons that make up our brain and determine our behavior. The outcome of these studies was both amazing and disappointing. I was left with the science and a technology that is able to emulate human thought in software, and the realization that perhaps there is nothing special about it, or nothing more special than a bag of equations running on a computer. Once we decoded how individual neurons work, the bricks that make up our brain, it was just a matter of time until the buildings we could build with those bricks were tall enough to be interesting. 
So with this realization in mind, with two friends from Boston, I started my own AI startup. And many years and many up and down later, our AI runs on tens of millions of devices and billions to come. Today, humans are not the best at playing chess, flying father jets, diagnose diseases. Machines are. For thousands of years, humans have thought of our intelligence as the most distinctive trait that tells us apart from humans and today from machines. Today, machines can think as well as we do, or better. The biggest advancements in science occur when one takes facts at face value, as Galileo and Einstein did. When Einstein took at face value that the speed of light was constant, no matter how one would measure it, then he was forced to realize that time and space were the thing changes. And by doing so, he revolutionized science. So are you ready to take this new fact at face value and draw the unavoidable conclusions? Artificial intelligence can think like us. There is no province, there is no profession that is safe from artificial intelligence. It is not true that, yes, AI can do this, but it probably cannot imitate my intuition in this and this other profession. Yes, it can. And if we can today, it will. It is as if today we have built a magic mirror. On the one side of this mirror, there is us, humans, and on the other side, there are machines. Machines that can think like us. And the question, the big question we are asking to this magic mirror is, are humans the same of machines? Or, as I like to put it in a simple equation, what is the result of human minus machines? If the result is zero, well, then there is nothing special about us. And there is nothing dramatic about machine leaving us in the dust by becoming smarter and smarter and substituting us. Nobody will care. Do you like the answer? So and so, right? I don't. Is there anything special about you, about us, that makes this equation non-zero? What is the result of this equation, are humans minus machine equal to something? And if so, what is that something? What is the little spark that makes that simple equation non-zero? 17 years old, Max Versace knew something about it. Uh, before diving into science, I was uh, an avid reader of all sorts of religious texts, from the Eastern to the Western. And in those texts, it was clearly stated that humans, our own essence, is precisely that something else. Hinduists call it Brahman. Christians call it God. Eastern religions are very clear when they state that humans are neither their body nor their mind. Students of ancient Kabbalah were well aware that the body and the mind are just the lower the most mundane, the most material manifestation of that something else. Well, I'm not a spiritual guide. I am just a simple scientist turned entrepreneur. And I was kind of busy in the next 30 years building artificial intelligence. So I am sorry, I do not have the answer for you today. In my journey through artificial intelligence, I went full circle, asking myself the same questions that I was asking when I was a teenager. But now, with the very solid scientific reason. We are living in a time today where not only we can, but we must ask those questions. Because now we have built this magic mirror. And if we decide not to, then perhaps we are not better than the machines that we fear. Dante was right when he wrote, Fatti non foste a viver come bruti, ma perseguir virtute e conoscenza. In other words, your purpose is not to live like brute beast, but to pursue virtue and knowledge. Surprisingly, the biggest gift of artificial intelligence 
will not be just better technology. AI has the ability to give us back our very own purpose. We are entering today an exciting time, and I wonder what is your unique solution to the God equation? Thank you.